Hi, my name is Jillian Zayan, and this is the Physics of Fireworks. Hope you enjoy! Every summer on the 4th of July, the sky lights up all around the country. Fireworks fill the air with bursts of red and gold and blue and many more mesmerizing colors. But have you ever wondered when fireworks were first invented? Or maybe how fireworks actually work? Or even why you can see the colors just a split second before you hear the loud bang? Well, to answer the first question, most historians believe the first firecracker was used in 200 BC China to ward off evil spirits. Bamboo has hollow air pockets, so when heated in a fire, it explodes, making a loud bang. Thus, the first firecracker ever dated was made. Moving on to around 700 AD, historians believe Chinese alchemists were searching for an elixir for eternal life when they mixed together saltpeter, or potassium nitrate, which was a common seasoning used in cooking at the time, charcoal, sulfur, and a few other ingredients, they unintentionally created a gunpowder. They put this gunpowder into bamboo and then lit them on fire, creating the first ever fireworks. Fast forwarding to present day, after much studying and experimentation, we now have the colorful fireworks that we see and enjoy for many big celebrations like the 4th of July. Now for how fireworks work. In order for a firework to lift off, a lift charge needs to be ignited at the bottom of the tube underneath the actual firework. This lift charge will propel the firework into the air. Now, a firework follows the basic path of projectile motion. Its initial velocity will determine the maximum height of the firework, and generally, larger fireworks will need a larger lift charge, allowing them to explode higher in the air. After its initial launch, the fuse on the actual firework will start to burn. Once the fuse is completely burned, the burst charge is ignited, sending the stars or the bright colors we see in all directions. Of course, the fuse is timed so that the firework explodes at its apex. This is possible because, as I said earlier, fireworks follow projectile motion, assuming negligible air resistance. Using the uniformly accelerated motion equations, the path of the firework after launch can be determined and we can figure out the maximum height of a firework and the time it takes to reach its maximum height. The acceleration of the firework will always be due to gravity, so we know its acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We also know the firework's initial velocity from its lift charge, so we can use simple trigonometric functions to determine the y component of its initial velocity to use as its initial velocity in our UAM equations. In the x direction, velocity is constant, so also using trigonometric functions, we can find its initial velocity in the x direction. We can also find how far horizontally the firework is projected to travel by using the equation shown, where Vx is the initial horizontal velocity, T is the total time it takes to follow its projectile path, and change in x is the firework's displacement. The time the firework takes to reach its apex is half of the entire time it takes to follow its path from its initial launch to its landing point at the same vertical height, so a firework's fuse is timed accordingly. Fireworks also need to explode at a high enough height so that they're both safe and can be seen by lots of people. To determine a firework's maximum height, or change in y, we use the following equation, where a is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, t is half of the total time, and viy is its initial velocity in the y direction. One last variable that can be found or used is the firework's final velocity in the y direction just as it would hit the ground. Different elements and compounds are used in fireworks to produce different colors. Each element or compound emits a different wavelength when it explodes, so a huge variety of colors can be made, such as the ones shown in this picture. According to the visible spectrum, the smallest wavelengths produce violet colors, and the largest wavelengths produce red colors. And finally, that last question. Why do we see the firework before we actually hear the firework? Well, sound waves move through mediums by vibrating surrounding particles. This means that temperature influences the speed of sound, so we can determine the speed of sound according to the equation shown. The standard speed of sound at about 20 degrees Celsius is 343 meters per second. Light waves, on the other hand, are electromagnetic waves that do not need a medium to travel through. This means all light waves travel at a speed of 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That's nearly 1 million times faster, and this explains why we see the firework before we actually hear it. 
And that was the physics of fireworks. Thanks for watching. Baby, you're a fire.